Okay, so I want to go over the um, mitosis and uh, compound, no, uh, white blood cell lab. One second. Okay, so um, we're going to skip the compound microscopy portion. Um, if you take micro, you'll be tested on compound microscopy and how to actually use a microscope. Um, but basically, the gist of the microscope is you're putting a slide on the stage and you're using the lowest objective lens to get it into focus um, using the fine focus and coarse focus knobs. And um, then when you have that in focus, then you're gonna move to the second lowest lens. So the lowest lens is the red banded one, which is the 5X objective. Then you're gonna move up to the 10X objective, which I believe is the yellow one. Um, get it into focus using the fine focus knob and then um, move up to the blue lens, which is the um, the 40x objective. And then you're going to get it into focus using the fine focus knob. Um, the trick with microscopes is that you have um, two eyepieces and these guys have lenses in them and magnify um, your sample tenfold, and then the objective lenses magnify whatever lens you're on, right, that fold. So four, um, 10, uh, 40, and then 100. <clears throat> the eyepieces the, are actually like um, binoculars, and so you can adjust them to fit the width of your eyes. And then usually the, the left eyepiece is the one that has the ocular focus, so you can use that to get the eye into focus, your left eye, once you have the whole thing in focus. Um, there's a little iris, uh, iris diaphragm stop. There's a little lever underneath the stage that you can close. So you can turn it clockwise and close it or stop it up and it'll actually allow more contrast. So the cells will be able to um, pop out. You'll be able to see them better. Or you can open up and let more light through. And then there's a little dial for the light as well. Um, this is how you would carry it right um and then uh, and put it away that way as well okay so um you can read this uh, lab for how to use the microscope um you'll have to go over it in microbiology as well um but i'm not going to test you on how to use a microscope for our lab um this just shows you how to do a wet mount preparation um, how to scan through it okay so for our lab today what you're going to do is you're going to look at a whitefish blastula slide. So you're going to get a whitefish blastula slide. Um, I'll actually um, post PowerPoints so that you can, um, pictures so that you can actually look through them and uh, draw the cells. <coughs> um, normally you would put it on the stage in the lowest objective, the um, red lens and uh, that's the 4x objective so it's 400 or excuse me that's 40 total magnification because the red lens is a scanning objective and that is the lowest objective so that's four times magnification and then you have the ocular lens which is um, 10 times the magnification so four times 10 gives you 40 total magnification um the whitefish blastula is a ball of rapidly dividing cells, okay? Um, and so uh, you need to go into those cells and find, um, or go into that ball of cells and find different cells in different states of cell division. Um, so you're gonna identify cells in each stage of the cell life cycle. So find a cell in interphase, one in prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Um, label the total magnification, um, you don't have to worry about that because we're online, the cell membrane, nucleus, and cytosol. Um, you don't have to do part B, okay? And then you're going to use a meiosis description in your textbook or on my PowerPoint to answer the other questions. Okay, so um, for number one, look at the PowerPoint that I posted. You can um, use the lecture one as well, um, but I'll put up a bunch of uh, random slides. The best way to do this first is draw out the stages of the life cycle so that you know what you're looking at. Um, interphase, the um, cells are not going to be 
um, the, the chromosome, I'm sorry, the um, nucleus is not going to be visible, right? Because the chromosomes haven't got condensed yet. And then in prophase, you're actually going to see the chromosomes. So you're going to be able to see the, um, the nucleus. Metaphase, the chromosomes are all lined up on a middle axis. Anaphase, they're moving away. Uh, telophase, they're at the ends. And then cytokinesis uh, occurs last. So I want you to draw pictures. Um, and you have to be able to identify the cells for the lab exam. Okay, so for, and I'll write that right here, for a lab exam, you need to ID the stage of life cycle. So for example, if I have a picture of a cell and the chromosomes are all lined up on the central axis, could you tell me what stage it is? And what stage comes before that? What stage comes after that? Um, and then what's happening, right? And so if I give you like a um, short answer question where I say describe each stage, could you be able to, to do that? So describe each stage. So what's happening in each stage of mitosis for interphase, prophase, metaphase, oops, sorry, life cycle um, would be interphase, and then mitosis would be prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And then for meiosis, excuse me, um, you know, you have meiosis one and you have meiosis two. So what's going on in meiosis one and what's going on in meiosis two? And when do we use these? So we use mitosis to make um, more body cells. We use meiosis uh, to... Uh, to make our egg and sperm, okay? Um, and obviously understand uh, what cells are, you know, diploid, um, right, 2N, um, 46 chromosomes, 23 pairs. And then which ones are haploid? Um, 23 single um, chromosomes. Okay. So that's it for the white blood cell, uh, or sorry, the mitosis um, slides. Okay. Um, which phase of meiosis contains 23 chromosomal pairs and which phases contain 23 individual chromosomes? If you look at the chart, um, prophase one through uh, telophase one is similar to mitosis. So you still have a 2N by the time you're done. So then you're going to have 2N for prophase two, right? Um, metaphase two, they're lining up and that's, whoops. The chromosomal pairs are lining up, but then in anaphase, they're moving away from one another. So this is actually where you go into haploid cells or 1N. Um, and then in telophase, it's one end as well. Um, well, telophase two, I should say. Um, and this is where you have your four sperm cells, right? Or um, you have how many egg cells? So you have, technically you have four eggs, um, but one functional egg, right? And three, uh, reabsorbed eggs or residual eggs. Okay, um, let's get into the white blood cell lab. So this is a differential leukocyte count. Uh, the purpose of this, so a differential leukocyte count, uh, you would do when you're sick or you go to the doctor's office and they would do a complete blood count or CBC. So they're gonna look at your amount of red blood cells, amount of hemoglobin, hematocrit, uh, red blood cell count, um, and we'll talk about that for the blood lab, the red blood cell lab. Um, they'd also do a white blood cell count. So generally, how many white blood cells do you have? You should have around 10,000 white blood cells per uh, cubic millimeter of, of plasma, right? And then the differential white blood cell count or differential leukocyte count is looking at, okay, how much of each type of white blood cells do you have? So um, go ahead and read this. It's, um, it's pretty explanatory. Um, I want you to know the different white blood cells, right? So there's neutrophils, there's basophils, eosinophils, 
lymphocytes and monocytes. So those are your five types of white blood cells. Um, I want you to know normal ranges, so I'm gonna write it right here. So know uh, your five types of white blood cells, right? <clears throat> um, no normal ranges for each white blood cell. Um, and it's gonna be slightly different wherever you look. So neutrophils, for example, the neutrophils right here, normal is about 45 to 75%. So if you count 100 white blood cells, you should see about 45 to 75 neutrophils. So they should be the most abundant. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, um, no A reason why they are elevated. So know a reason why each white blood cell would be elevated. So let's say I go into the doctor's office, I have my uh, differential white blood cell count um, measured. My neutrophils are supposed to be 75% and they're actually 88%. What does that mean? Um, typically that means that I have some type of a uh, uh, short-term or acute bacterial infection, okay? Um, so I just want one reason why each one of them would be elevated. Um, when you're talking about normal ranges for these guys, the most frequent are the neutrophils. And so um, neutrophils followed by uh, lymphocytes, followed by um, monocytes, then eosinophils and basophils. How do I remember that? Uh, never let monkeys eat bananas. So never let monkeys eat bananas. Um, N-L-M-E-B. Neutrophil are going to be the greatest or most abundant that you see, um, followed by lymphocytes, then monocytes, then eosinophils and basophils. Um, basophils are really rare. So if you have 100 white blood cells, you're not likely to uh, C1. You might see one basophil, you might not. Okay. All right. Um, so let's see. <coughs> um, for the lab exam, I want you to be able to ID them, right? So um, for identifying or the practicum portion, I want you to ID the white blood cells um, and know why they're elevated. Uh, for the written portion, I want you to know normal ranges and know why they would be elevated. Okay, so uh, normally we would do a differential white blood cell count on a normal blood sphere and an abnormal blood sphere, and then you compare their numbers, your numbers like, with your lab mates. Um, why do I have you count 100 white blood cells? Because um, versus just looking at them. White blood cells are really hard to figure out what they are initially, but if you count 100 of them and you have to categorize, okay, this one looks like a neutrophil, this one is an eosinophil, this one is a monocyte, this one is a lymphocyte, here's another neutrophil, here's another one, um, you get really good at identifying them, okay? So my, my uh, advice to you is just to go on Google Images, uh, search, uh, neutrophils and just click through the pictures, make sure they're normal, not pathological, um, and then eosinophils, et cetera, et cetera, do the same thing. Um, if we were in lab, we would do a differential count on an abnormal blood smear. And so um, abnormal blood smears are really interesting because the white blood cells don't look normal. So infectious mononucleosis, um, this is called the kissing disease, excuse me, this is elevated um, monocytes and uh, lymphocytes. So elevated monocytes because it's a long-term infection, elevated lymphocytes um, because it's a viral infection, right? Um, chronic lymphoblastic leukemia. Leukemia is cancer of the bone marrow, so it's rapidly dividing cells of the bone marrow. Um, lymphoblastic leukemia is called lymphoblastic leukemia because you have the precursor to lymphocytes, which is lymphoblasts, um, rapidly dividing and getting kicked out of the bone marrow before they're mature. So you see a bunch of these guys immature and they don't look normal in the um, blood, right? And then granulocytic, um, your neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils are granulocytes. And so 
um, you're going to see a lot of those guys. Uh, eosinophilia just means excessive eosinophils. Um, eosinophils are um, uh, elevated in some types of asthma. So eosinophils are associated with uh, um, allergic reactions, like long-term allergic reactions, like asthma, hay fever, what have you. And so these guys can be elevated for multitudes of reasons. Um, here's a hematocytoblast. So this is a stem cell. It's been committed to being um, a blood cell. It just is a um, stem cell to all the blood cells. So hemo, excuse me, hematocytoblasts give rise to all of these guys. So hematocytoblast is gonna give rise to a myeloblast that is eventually going to develop into a neutrophil, basophil, or eosinophil. We call these guys granulocytes because they have grains in their cytoplasm. Um, basophils are obviously called basophils, well maybe not obvious to you guys, um, because they pick up a blue basic stain. Phil means love, baso is that basic uh, stain. Eosinophils are called eosinophils because they pick up that beautiful uh, eosin red stain. They love that eosin red stain. Neutrophils. Um, neutrophils, their nucleus are banded when they are immature, and that nucleus segments the mature, the more mature they are. So you can tell if the nucleus, um, if the neutrophil um, is immature or mature. Immature would be banded, uh, mature would be segmented. Then we have a megakaryocyte that becomes platelets, so it fragments and becomes platelets. These guys are involved in clotting. Um, then we have rubiblasts, which eventually become reticulocytes and then red blood cells. <coughs> we have lymphoblasts, which give rise to large lymphocytes um, and then small lymphocytes. Um, I'll tell you that as the lymphocytes mature, they add in more cytoplasm. So the cytoplasm or cell gets bigger. Um, monoblasts give rise to monocytes. Here's a chart, so it's kind of hard to see because it's sideways, but print it out, look at it, flip it. Um, granulocytes are called granulocytes because they have grains in the cytoplasm. Here's your neutrophils, your eosinophils, and your basophils. Here's normal range. Um, this is what they look like. This is what their nucleus looks like. Um, neutrophils are cool because they're predatory, so they go and eat um, bacteria, they search out bacteria. Um, eosinophils are high during allergic reactions like um, hay fever or asthma. Basophils are high um, when you have acute allergic reactions. So like you eat shellfish and you're allergic to them or what have you. Peanut butter. Um, these guys are going to secrete serotonin, histamine, and heparin. And so um, that's going to dilate the blood vessels and prevent uh, the blood from clotting. And so this is one of the first uh, steps of inflammation reaction. And I'll talk more about that when we get into lecture. Um, lymphocytes are, um, uh, they um, recognize foreign antigens, they're going to make you, or send in your immune response, and then monocytes are with chronic uh, illness or chronic conditions. Um, these guys are also phagocytic, so they're gonna go around eating stuff. Um, differential count. So here's a typical differential count. Here's normal. Um, whoops, sorry. Here's normal. Um, the second one is with uh, neutrophilic leukocytosis. Um, so excessive uh, white blood cells, uh, that would be neutrophils. Then lymphocytosis, um, monocytosis, eosinophilia, and then we get into the disease states. So infectious mononucleus, um, myelogenous leukemia, lymphoblastic leukemia. And so you can look at the different types of counts um, based on the disease state that people have. And this is actually what they do. So they'll take a sample of your of um, plasma, spin it down and collect the Buffy coat, which is the white blood cells and platelets, and they'll analyze the white blood cells and, and count them and do a differential count and see how many you have. Um, so for this one, for the PowerPoint, I want you to just look at the neutrophils um, and see each one of them and see how they uh, look. Um, normally, I would have students do a normal white blood cell count and then an abnormal white blood cell count, but we're not in lab, so you don't have to worry about that. 
Um, but still, I would like you to know no, number five. So I want you to know, okay, um, if someone has eosinophilia, which uh, white blood cell is high and why? If somebody has chronic granulocytic leukemia, which white blood cell is high and why? All right. Um, and so that is the gist of it.